Come on. All right, title of the message, the picture of our salvation. It's interesting that the Lord put this in this passage. Um, so buckle up. Um, it's kind of a, probably out of the theological understanding to preach this passage out of the book of Acts. But um, it, the Lord sometimes settles on a verse with me, and then we have a bunch more. And so last week, remember, we talked about Cornelius and Peter having the vision and all of that going on, okay? And so it's fulfillment of that. So there's a lot of scripture. I will read it, and then we will go into the message. Amen? Thank you, Dan. Um, <laughs> verse 24 of the 10th chapter of the book of Acts. Now the following day they entered Caesarea. And Cornelius was waiting for them, and they had called together his relatives and close friends. Remember what was going on. He had already sent messages for Peter. He wanted Peter to come and hang out with him, okay? And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. He had been hearing about who Peter was and probably the miracles that worked around him. But Peter pretty smartly said, but Peter lifted him up saying, stand up, I'm, I myself am a man also. As he talked with him, he went in and found many who had come together. And he said to them, you know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company with or go with one another company or nation? But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore, I came without objection as soon as I was sent for and I asked them, for what reason have you sent for me? And Cornelius said, four days ago I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard. And your alms were remembered in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa and call for Simon here, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging in the house of Simon the Tanner by the sea. And when he comes, he will speak to you. So I sent you immediately, and you've done well to come. And now, therefore, we're all present before God to hear all things commanded to you by God. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, she does it so fast, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is the Lord of all. That the word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea, began in Galilee around the baptism which John preached, and how God anointed Jesus Nazareth with the, with the Holy Spirit, with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all, which he did both in the land of Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed. <clears throat> by hanging on a tree. And God raised him up on the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before God and even to us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and testify. That is he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets witness that. Through this, his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. Long passage. Okay. So how do I get a picture of our salvation out of that passage? Since you don't know, I'll tell you. Understand how this is working in Peter. Not only did he get showed by God that the gospel was not only for Jews but Gentiles. But he, listen, immediately he obeyed. That's something we might really think about, that when God speaks to us about something, we do it. The longer we wait and hesitate for that, the better doubt and fear and everything might come up. Well, you know, I don't know if I'm supposed to do that. Well, I don't know if I should go to that Bible study, even though God told you as soon as you heard it, you should go. And then the longer you wait, then you don't do it. But Peter was smart enough to realize after the failing at the cross time 
that, uh-uh, I'm going to do exactly what God says when to do it now. So he's going on a walk to Caesarea with three Gentiles. He's not supposed to hang out with them. He's not supposed to walk with them. But he says in this passage, there's no partiality. In other words, there's no favoritism with God. He's, he, he's for everybody. He's not a God who's saying, oh, well, you know, I like you in this neighborhood. I don't like No. Everybody here is loved by God. Maybe not everybody here is walking with God, but that doesn't change how he feels about you. This is who he is. There's no partiality. So Cornelius is pretty excited. He invited his whole family in, and everybody could get in the house. Okay? So he must be believing something. So if God interjected in the moment, then what was going on is that God was going to do something. See, and you've got to begin to understand this is how God works with us individually and corporately. Okay? I don't know what week you had, but I had more than an interesting week. Okay? So much that I can't even share it with you. Not because it was bad, but because it's, it was in-depth, very deep thing that was going on in my life in a good way. Some people would say it wasn't good, but I thought it was. So we're coming to this place now where Peter's going to stand before everybody and give them the message. He wasn't afraid to tell the message. Okay, now realize he's now been told by God, these are not, don't call them unclean. God can clean all. And he brings the gospel to him. And he shares who Jesus is. And one of the things that really we miss by English translation, that when he says, like in verse 36, the word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. We hear that, and I will never forget when we're doing news group. Well, what does Jesus Christ mean? And all of them raised. Well, that's his last name. No, it's not his last name. <laughs> See, it would be better if you understood and called it Jesus Messiah. Messiah means the sent one, the anointed one, the purposed one. Now, he, in English, is translated Christ. So in my personal life, as I've grown in the Lord, I, I do say Jesus Christ. I go him his name. But most of the time when I start my prayer in the morning, it was very simple. Jehovah, which is God's name, the Father, I come to the name of Messiah Yeshua, Jesus' name. I speak out who he is and his mission. Okay? So in this point, I want you to understand, he's, when we read it in English, He's speaking to the Gentiles, this is Jesus the Messiah. He's saying, this is the one that us Jews were waiting for to come and free us from you guys. <laughs> Seriously. And so when we read it, oh, that's Jesus Christ. And so sometimes you just might in your mind begin to put, when you see Christ, put Messiah in. Because it changes everything because it's what he was sent for. He was sent for something. Okay? And so as I looked at this, and I, I go, well, this is a lot. And as pastors, oh, well, I could stop and do 24 through 33 and talk that. And well, golly, I like 34 through 43. And, and he stuck me on a verse. Verse 38 How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth to, with the Holy Spirit with power who went about doing good, healing all, who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. He stuck me there early in the week. Okay, why are you sticking me here? And then, praise God, Kim was faithful this morning to give me the picture that absolutely gives me what I wanted to see. It's amazing. If you remember the songs that we did today, that Donna picked out, is about our victory, victory over the devil, victory over darkness, that he comes. And I'm sitting there in the presence of God, worshiping, going, thank you, Lord. We could go back and do the whole worship set again, and you would get the same message I'm about ready to preach. Okay? So what happens is we look at this passage, and the first thought would be, well, are you mean he's just delivering people of demons? Nope. That's not how I see it. There's something I want you to understand who you are and what you were, 
or what you need to be. When I read that passage, what the Spirit of God spoke to me is, this is the total purpose of salvation. Okay? The sole purpose was to deliver us from the devil. Why? Because everybody without Jesus is under the authority of the devil. And we don't want to think about that in the USA. We don't want to think about demons and devils and all of that, you know, because we love our friends and family who say, hell with Jesus, and, but, you know, we love them. But you've got to realize they are under the authority of the devil. Let's hang there for a moment. Picture yourself before salvation. Picture yourself in what you did, what you thought, what was right, what was, whatever you felt was able to do, and everything you did, you were walking under an authority of what he teaches. He was a liar from the beginning. He's violent. He's perverted. He's wicked. And when we don't know Jesus, we're under that authority. And we forget after we're saved, yippee yo okay, yay, yay, I'm happy to be saved. But we don't remember what we came out of. We don't remember the picture of our salvation. I had an encounter on Thursday night, Thursday early morning. It was an intense warfare. Won't go into that, but I'm here. And I was, and he put. <laughs> that Thursday morning experience in with my sermon on the floor because I'm driving to town to take care of what hair I have and try to make it flat, okay? <laughs> and praise God, I go first thing in the morning so she can see white hair because <laughs> she says, I can't do you in the afternoon. I can't see good enough. <clears throat> and I'm driving to town after this encounter I had and God just speaks to me, just going down the road, and he goes, you understand Genesis 1-1? <laughs> I mean, out of the blue, I'm thinking, no, I'm not even thinking. I'm over an axe. What are you doing to me? <laughs> and what he brought to mind was, he said, let there be light. Remember? Yes. And you know what we think right away? Oh, that's the sun. That's the sun that shines on the earth. He goes, that's what you see in the natural. It was my light coming out of me over the dark world to create life. Let there be light. He was speaking out about his identity, and he's going to form that light into creation. Let there be light. Why did he do that first? Because without his light, there is no creation. Yeah. And so we right away, well, let there be light. Yay, turn the lights on. No, it was him creating moment. Now, yes, he made the sun and all that shine, okay? But it was his light. If you get into that in the book of John, he talks about, I've come and nobody knows me, but I'm the light. I'm the light of every man. So when he created you, when we see a tiny little baby with more hair than pastor, okay? When he created her in mama's womb, that was by light, his light. Every one of you here have been created by the light of God. But then, in the natural, we're, when we're born into it, we're born under the power and the authority of darkness. We've got something sitting over us that we think, oh, we, you know, we love little kids, okay? They're fun. But they need to know Jesus because they have something over the top of them that they don't even realize. We want to look at. Well, we love, of course we love them. God loves them. They were created by him. But there's something that needs to happen. There needs to be a salvation moment for anybody to receive light of him. Put up 1 John, please. 3 8. He who sins is of the devil, and for the devil is sinned from the beginning. There he is. That's who he is. For the purpose of the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. 
That's why he came. Okay? So he comes for a purpose, and it's to destroy something that's over us. Because we are conceived under the first Adam, we are conceived in sin, therefore devil has immediate authority over our lives. And they can be the sweetest little kids running around at 10 years old that don't know Jesus, and they may be happy. But we look at them, we don't realize what they're really under. Because we only look in the natural, but in the supernatural, in the Word of God, it says they're not under God. Well, what kind of God is this? It's a God, if you read the book, it made a plan to get you to understand how important it is to raise your children in the things of God. How important it is to know the Word of God. How important it is to pray over your kids every day that they would come to the light. We have this thing in America where kids go into high school and kill kids. What's going on? They're under something. They're under the spirit of violence and death. And we go, well, we just don't understand. You should, as a believer, understand that those that pack in their AR-15 and they want to kill their fellow students because they're full of hate and violence, it isn't them. It's the darkness they were conceived in. They walked in without Jesus. We need to gain a respected understanding of your own salvation so that you might want to walk differently. So that's why Jesus came, to destroy the works of the devil. And where are the works? Everything that I did when I was in darkness. Everything I thought was okay. All the drink and the drugs and all the other stuff. All the anger, unforgiveness, bitterness, hatred, revenge, whatever it might be. I was under a master, it says in Romans. I was under a master that made me think it was okay to be full of hate and anger. Unforgiveness. Okay to get drunk and drive. Okay to take drugs. Okay to sell drugs. It was okay. Because, see, my master was telling me the truth of his truth. His upside-down gospel. His upside gospel is being preached all over the world right now that all this is okay, whatever you want to do sexually, whatever you want to do in drinking, whatever you want to do, it's all okay. Because, see, he's called what? The prince of the air. Okay? And he's releasing something over the creation so that we, he, he can't defeat God. All he can do is break his heart when he takes one of us with him to hell. That's the only thing that God breaks God's heart, is he might lose you for eternity. And we live in our salvation without recognizing why he says, be holy as I'm holy, because you're walking in a light, not in the darkness. And we've got to begin to understand our salvation in a greater way. And by walking in our salvation, we'll have a greater understanding what it, we're releasing. Are we releasing light? Or are we releasing darkness? You can be saved and release darkness. I read a couple articles about a man who uh, is Southern Baptist. Him and I probably wouldn't agree doctrinally. But we agree about Jesus Christ. We agree about the cross. We agree about a lot of things. And this we said, American Christianity is in crisis. Great article. And he's a leader of the Southern Baptist Convention. And this is what he said. I got pastors coming to me and don't know what to do because they're preaching the Sermon on the Mount is interesting that they're going to teach it. And if you really read the Sermon on the Mount, it's hard to read. Turn the other cheek, go the extra mile, forgive, bless those who curse you, blah, 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 okay? And these pastors are coming now saying, I preach it, and I have men and women come to me and say, how can you speak the liberal talking points? And he goes, I'm not speaking the liberal talking points. I'm speaking the words of Jesus. They said, it's not for now. It's too weak. Listen, church. If you're a Christian, we don't go by the trend of politics or religion. We go by the book called Jesus Christ who wrote it. 
We are in a crisis where we can take the words of Jesus and say they don't fit today. I got to break a news flash. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's king of kings, sits on the throne. And this presence of glory you felt during worship is him coming to his people saying, follow my way. Put up John 3, please. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son. He says that while before his resurrection, people, and he's telling Nicodemus this, who's a Jew, and he's telling the Jew, I've come for everybody. But the Jew didn't get it because their religious blindness said, we're the ones. Now listen to that. So now we have people who are so bound in the religious and political spirit that they, they think to be nice to someone is liberal. Holy moly. But what they don't understand is if in this message, they're walking with another God. They're walking with the God they supposedly were delivered of. They're walking with a God of darkness, hate, vengeance, and, and anger. And they're saying, oh, we've we, we got to fight for our rights. Jesus didn't fight for his rights. He hung on a cross for our rights. And so we have this problem in our salvation church. If for a moment you could close your eyes and remember what you were before you got saved. If you remember everything you thought was okay and you did, you have to not, under, not deny that you were doing it to a God. So there's this cosmic experience going on in the heavens. In third heaven, Jesus sits on the throne. He's being given authority in heaven and earth. You got it? Second heaven, the prince of the air is releasing the junk over human relation because he had Adam fall and now have a right to these people. And they do what I say. Hmm. But then we got saved. If you really saw what I saw during worship, which I'm going to tell you in a minute, I wish for a moment I could just create the video of the Spirit of God, what he showed me. It went back to Genesis chapter 1 about let there be light. So do you know what happened when Jesus came out of the grave? It wasn't just his body came out. He was the epitome of light. So when he came out of the grave, he came out, and what did he disperse over the earth? This great creative light again. So when he came out of the grave, he released darkness, pushed it back, and said, I'm back. I've come back for my creation. I've come back and I got my light on it again. And I'm going to release my light all over the world. And then he says, anybody that grabs my light, they become light. Oh, Holy Ghost, if they see who you are. Why does he tell us in the scripture, hey, don't put your lamp underneath the bed. Don't hide your light. If you really knew what is in you, what wants to come out, and we walk in the fire in the presence of God, this city would be full of light. Woo! We give up the flesh. We give up the anger. We give up the sin. We give up our pornography. We give up our perversion. We give up our drinking. We give up things that have no business with darkness. And all of a sudden, there comes a light upon the land. They're going, well, we need God to come. We need God to come and bring revival. He said, I've come, and I've made you light. Why you cover it up with your behavior? Why you cover it up because you're afraid of something? 
Why are you afraid of that standing up to that devil? I free him from you. Romans chapter 5, please. But when he was still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. That's us. For scarcely for a righteous man one will die. Yet, perhaps for a good man, some will even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we have been saved from the wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God. We were enemies. Hear it? We, we belonged to another God who was the enemy of God. We're reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. If we came in the house like we came in today, and if you worship like you did today, if you come in ready to do something different today, you might see a different community in a short time. You might see people all of a sudden going, what the hell happened to you? Hell's out of me. That's what happened to me. I don't cuss no more. I don't drink no more. I don't walk in darkness no more. I walk in the light that was put into me at the moment that I relieved. The moment I received. Colossians 1, please. Here it is. He's delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us. That means transferred us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. All right. So when I got saved, devil was in me. Oh, I was bouncing like a devil man in bed. He wanted, he want, I had so much anger and hate in my heart that day, I had a plan of murder in me. I'm serious. Mm -mm -mm, not good. I was going to take somebody fishing on Lake Oroville. <laughs> okay? But God came. And I'm full of darkness. I'm freezing cold as the demons were freaking manifesting in me. And I heard a voice, a soft voice, a voice that doesn't need to yell, a voice that needs to say, John, do you believe in me? Even when he spoke, my body stopped vibrating and jumped corking. And of course, stupid me said no. And I got colder and darker, and he spoke again. John, do you believe in me? No. <laughs> I got darker, and more authority of hell was taken over my soul. And third time he said, John, do you believe in me? I said, yes, Lord. Gone. My body quit jumping around in the bed. My body wasn't cold. Just by what? His light came into me, and that light pushed that darkness off of me. Yeah. I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know about demons. I had never been to church. But when I believed that Jesus Christ was Lord, the darkness backed away. Why? Because he's light. Because he died for me. I didn't know any of these passages. Okay? And later on, he showed right back up. The devil did. Now, he didn't touch me. He was touching my wife. Not this one. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. The devil's on me. I look over in the corner, there was a demon. It was a short guy. He must have been on a small journey. He's only about that tall. <laughs> and this thing, and Ray, I knew it was devil because there was no light in him. You hear that? When you talk of the scripture, it says in the scripture, the devil has no light in him. So here's a dark room with something that's darker than the room. Same voice said, don't look at him. Pick up my word and read it. Turned on the light. Don't remember what I read. I just started reading the word outside. Well, what? When you understand your salvation, 
When you understand the deliverance that took place, when you truly took your heart over to God, you would live differently, I would hope. Because you've been transferred out from that kingdom into the kingdom of a beloved son. You're no longer under that creature's authority. So when I was worshiping, he, I saw this months ago. Months ago, when I was worshiping, I saw the resurrection of the Lord. And as he came out of the grave, light just dispersed everywhere. Everywhere. Okay. Remember when he was dying, it got dark, remember? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when he came out of the grave... His light bursted out everywhere. And while I was worshiping today, the Lord says, close your eyes. Everybody, if you're entertained with me, close your eyes. I'm not going to sneak up and scare you. Just close your eyes for a moment. Picture yourself for a moment. And if you accepted Christ as Savior, just picture for a moment. The moment when you said, yes, Lord, I accept you. Show them, Lord, what entered in and what bursted out of them. Light. Light came in and light came out of you. And at that moment, you became the new creation Paul talks about. That old things are passing away and everything becomes new. Because now you're not a child of darkness, you're a child of light. And now in you is this light that wants to disperse. You ready? Just like it did when Christ was resurrected. See, this isn't in the passage, but if you can find it, fine. In Romans 6, verse 3. Do not know that as many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of death, certainly we'll also be in the likeness of his resurrection. That's what happened when we got saved. If you knew what's really in you, if you really knew and focused on the depth of your salvation, we move so quickly to get gifts and baptisms and deliverances and all the things that come with God. But if we would just live in our salvation, and know that this light is in us. And it's the very light that raised Christ from the dead. I've been praying a simple prayer in Philippians 3.10. That I would know the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. I want to know what that means. So in that moment of my salvation in 1986, on November 20th, darkness stepped away because light came in. I didn't walk with light right away. I didn't know what it meant. I didn't understand what it meant to quit smoking pot. I still did. I didn't understand. But it didn't matter what I understood. It's what I believed in. And then he took me on a journey to deliver me of drugs and alcohol. Then he takes me on a journey to get rid of anger and revenge. He takes me on a journey to be like him, full of light. And the church is waiting for a revival of God to show up in his light. And what if God is waiting for those in light to show up before his throne? Because it says we have a right to go to the throne of God. It says in the word of God that we can go with boldness 
by grace to the throne of God. Can you imagine what it's going to be like? As I'm sitting and worshiping today, I'm thinking about the second coming of Christ as he comes upon the earth and all of us join with him. It says there will be no need for sun because the light out of him will light everything up. Well, it will be us too. It will be a light party. Because we will be in him and he's in us and his light will shine out of us and the whole world will see who he is because of us. So when he says, be holy as I am holy, what he's trying to tell you is, get rid of the darkness that wants to keep you a foot tied in the other kingdom. Because if the enemy can get you to pretend that you don't have to get rid of everything, then the other ones won't get saved. That's all the gospel work is about, is the salvation of souls. And we compromise. I've compromised. I don't want to compromise. I want a picture in my heart of my salvation. I want to close my eyes and I want to see that moment when the voice of heaven spoke to me and I had all hell in me and around me. And all I said was, yes, Lord. And his light came from heaven into my soul, and boom, darkness backed away. You want to defeat the devil in your life? You praise the king of light. You exalt him. When you understand what he's done, the devil will back away from you. Because he's going to come at you in the weakness of what you believe was done for you. And the more you realize what's been done for you, through him, you exalt him. And he's got to back up. Because <coughs> light will be coming out of you. <coughs> so, in the experiences I've had, sometimes, oh, I'm going to bind that devil. I'm going to bind him. He's attacking me. I got a good idea. He's king. Devil, are you coming against me? Okay, you go ahead. But I'm going to talk about the king. I'm going to talk about the beauty of him. I'm going to talk about the glorious work he did on the cross. I'm, I'm going to talk about the blood that washes me and cleanses me. I'm going to talk about his righteousness that covers the earth. You start talking that, that devil don't like that. He don't like that one bit. Uh-uh. Oh, well, now, 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 now you're, you're, you're getting into this place where we might be Christians. <laughs> Something good is coming, church. I'm not exaggerating either. Something really good is coming. <coughs> it's going to come through you. Who choose to surrender. It's an amazing thing. I don't get it. I wouldn't know if I was to sit down and because I've been asking to have those conversations. Can I just sit at your feet, Jesus, and have conversations with you? And he probably hasn't allowed what I've wanted yet because he's afraid he doesn't want me to be stupid and say the things I probably say to him. Why did you rely on us? Why you rely on us? You're God Almighty. You've defeated Satan. You rose from the grave. Why you rely? Do a different plan. Can we talk about it, Christ? Why don't you just show up? Speak out from heaven. You're God of creation. Push that devil. No, no. That's not how he wants to do it. He wants to take those that were once owned by darkness to defeat darkness. And if that's the case, guess what it shows? How big he is. Can, can you imagine? Why do you think all heaven goes rejoicing when someone gets saved? Because it's speaking from heaven all over again. He's done it again. He defeated that devil. So when in John, Acts 10, 38, uh, he came from all those who were oppressed of the devil. It wasn't about demons being delivered to us. It was the oppression of the fall of man, and that's why he came. He came to break that yoke. He came. He said, I'm going to take care of that. 
whether you know it or not, that for which in you is that we quote it, but you don't understand it, greater is he that's in you is in the world. <laughs> Turn on the light, people. Turn on the light. Turn it on. Let it happen. I'm watching things happen with people. I mean, somebody was going to heaven on Tuesday night in worship. Amen? She's just going up there and flies the colors and the beauty of God was coming into her. Okay? All right? I'm watching people get touched over and over with a deeper fire coming and something's up, you know, because, see, God is up to something. So what if he's ready for those in light to stand up? What if he knows if you agree with what happened in your salvation, then you can become overcomers of the devil and all his works? You don't have to accept the lies about your identity anymore. You don't live in the past of your failures you live in the future of your home in heaven. You live with a light in you that wants to come busting out. It's good. I'm telling you, it's going to be good. I don't know about you. And so guess what? If the church became light like it's supposed to be, those in deep darkness would see it. Oh, well, here, man, you know, I can hang out with them freaking Christians. and freaking, I get a headache. There's something blinding on them people. I don't want to be around them. I don't want to be around those people. Now they can hang out with us with no problem. Well, you know, it's all right. They, they have a dimmer switch inside. I'm saved, but I don't want full light release because then I have to give up this, I have to give up that, I have to give up this, I have to give up that. God delivered a dimmer switch out of us today. It is really fun to run into people that don't know Jesus and you're walking in the presence. It's, it's fun. It's, it's like watching a Steven Spielberg movie with special effects. Remember one day, me and Paul were walking around the building over here because there was a building we don't like over here, okay, and we were praying. This guy was standing out front with his patch on and his T-shirt, and we're praying, tear down the walls of hell, God, tear down the walls of hell, God. And we walked around the building. First time, he's standing there smoking a cigarette. Second time around, he's kind of... Third time we get by and we're praising God and he goes just like this. Because <laughs> that career and couldn't take the light. You want to have fun in your life? Be filled with light. Because all of a sudden you're going to run to people and they're going to go. <clears throat> True, story. True story. Happens all the time. Chris and I were at the stop sign over there at Luther and Jackson a long time ago. We had a great deliverance time with somebody, and we were just happy. And we'd come up to the stop sign, and somebody's on the other side coming into town on Luther. And this girl was driving. This other passenger was there. And just as we got like this by each other, the passenger literally jumped across the seat at the, on the woman driving and put her face on the window and it was the biggest demonic face, and you could hear her screaming, and the poor woman driving <laughs> didn't know what was going on. But there was light. And I laughed. Oh, God. Deliver that woman, would you? You know why that don't happen much? We don't have enough light coming out to disturb them. So I'm looking for like a, you know... Just increase the light and see how much fun we could have as believers. Whoa! And then when they manifest, did you know God loves you? Do you know that thing inside of you that tells to hate me isn't you? God loves you. He died for you. But we don't want to lose people. You're not going to lose them. They're already lost. They already are condemned because they don't have the light. It's time that the church 
become a light in America again. It isn't going to be fun to sit there and read the word with me. Okay? And Jackie didn't sign up. I knew she wouldn't. <laughs> and the whole premise is that we would be walking in the light together. You understand? It isn't, it isn't a work. It is a completeness of our training. So you got to know what the book says. So you do what the book says. And when you struggle with what the book says, you ask the light to increase. Take care of it by the blood, Lord. Forgive me for my lack of faith. Forgive me, Lord, that I still want to hang on to this thing. And, you know, and I'm so tired of Christians saying, well, you know, that's who I've been all my life. Well, you're saved now. It's called born again, you have a new life. Yeah, but you know, my daddy was that way, and my grandma, she was mean as witch on the earth, and you know, so you know, I just can't get rid of that stuff. I mean, why can't I be angry at the world? Well, you say Jesus is your light. He came to save the world. We come up with every excuse in the world. And I, I, I got news. There'll be no excuse one day. It'd just be my luck. The day we all meet Christ after he comes back and I'll be the head of the line and you guys will be behind me waiting to meet him. And I don't want him to do this. Hey, John. Turn around. See him? Did you tell him the truth? Did you want him to love you more? than them loving me? You want them so much, to be, you want to be liked so much, that you allowed them to walk with a dimmer switch? Just so we could have a happy church? I want an anointed church. I want a powerful church. I want a church that delivers people, saves people, heals people. I, I think it's called the anointed one, the Messiah. And, and you all got it. I'm watching. As David's telling me, this woman don't like me. Then after she lives, tell David I'm praying for him. See? He, just, he, he didn't let what somebody, what was ever in that woman that didn't like what was in David. Will you quit taking it personal? We do not war with flesh and blood. We're principalities and powers in dark places. That's who we war with. Put up the last scripture, please, in Exodus. I have to preach one out of Exodus just because <laughs> Pastor Paul put it in me. I can't get it out. <laughs> this is his plan from the beginning. You got it? Therefore I say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I'll bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from bond their bondage. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. I will take you as my people, and I will be your God. And then you should know that I am the Lord your God who brings you out from the burdens of the Egyptians. The bad guys in this area, they call the river over here that was named for the sacraments of God. That's why it's called Sacramento. Okay? Those named that river as a blessing of God. But the people who come against you name that river now the West Nile. After the gods of Egypt that they worship. Okay? So the very fight you have on your hands right now is the very fight that God took Israel out from underneath Egypt. And the Pharaoh that said they can't go is the same God over you today who says you can't be all light, who says you can't be all free. But God says, if I said I set you free, whom I set free is free indeed. John chapter 8. And when you understand that, and when you find a spot and you ain't free, then you go, bring your light, show it to me, that I now might be light. I repent for what's in me that don't belong there, and I want to be free. I want to experience everything you have for me. Picture your salvation for a moment. 
I don't know where each one of you are. I'm not your keeper. He is. I keep pointing you to him. I want you to be free. I'm watching freedom all over the place, people. I am. The saddest thing that must happen to our Savior is then after he puts the light in us that we desire not to walk with it. Because we don't recognize how powerful the Messiah, Jesus, is. Because we're light. And so, I know that God can disperse whatever he wants today. I know that something good is coming from heaven. It's, if you knew the joy in my heart today as I listen to the people of God worship, I'm going, oh my God, this, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. They're coming. They're beginning to go after you. If you've begun, continue. If you haven't begun, begin. <sighs> Can't wait for next week's sermon because we all begin to know I'm going verse by verse. You ought to know what's coming next week if you get ahead of time. So you're ready to hear what maybe I heard and then maybe what you heard and maybe together we all can hear something together and become a committed body of Christ. I watched God change something in the pattern, but... <laughs> Amen? Could you all stand, please? Hmm? Sure. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to share something. Um, I can't remember what day it was, just this last week. <sighs> There's, there was a shaking and a stirring in my spirit. And I, I didn't know what it was. It, it was almost scary in a way. It was just this shaking and this rumbling in my spirit. And I was like, Lord, what is going on? Lord, what is it? He spoke to